My name is Stefan Jungfist. I'm the head of studio of Experiment 101. So what are you showing here at PAX New with Biomutant? Yeah, so as you said, we're showing a game called Biomutant. It's an open world uh, RPG. Um, so you're free to go anywhere. Uh, the game is a post-apocalyptic kung fu fable. Uh, the fable part is quite easy to explain. You're playing as an animal uh, and also fable uh, around the campsite. Camp, uh, we used to, as humans, tell stories with some kind of sense morale uh, and to bring that through with uh, talking animals. I mean, we have a little bit of that, but we don't take ourselves too serious. Kung Fu comes from that we wanted to create a new type of uh, combat melee system and integrate that with shooting seamlessly to have some form of free flow uh, combat system. More innovative of a Yong Vu or a Hong Kong action game rather than your traditional third person shooter. So I think we succeeded with that. So you're more in the air, turning, twisting, uh, anytime interrupting or going uh, between melee and shooting rather than like backing, aiming and shooting with the trigger. Uh, kind of reminds me of uh, Devil May Cry. Do you remember that game? Of course I do. <laughs> yeah, I played all of them. So it has a little bit of that uh, element, but it's even more free-flowing. So it's not kind of static once you get airborne, but it can also fight on the ground. Uh, so it's kind of hard to explain. You use the face button a lot to combine shooting and melee, but also I think the big difference is that you have uh, mutations. So abilities and powers coming from mutations. And that's also obviously making a huge difference. You can weave them into your Combat Mix creative toolbox seamlessly as well. Talk about the story in this fantasy world. What's going on story-wise? Yeah, so that's one of the big reveals at the end. So obviously, I'm not going to reveal that, but I can tell you there are three things. So we're going to try to go for an open, personal ending that goes beyond cutscenes. So the world is currently dying. So our take on a post-apocalyptic world is not a nuclear bomb that uh, blew up the world. So in this world, there's a huge tree at the center of the world with five roots emanating, uh, stretching across the world. So as a player, you have the option to either heal the tree or you don't do it. And the tree is a symbol of the chance of world survival. So if you complete a game without healing the tree, this, you still have a world that is dying. And that can be part of your ending if you're playing as evil, if you will. We have a Jin Yang uh, karma system uh, where you make choices throughout the game when you interact with characters, etc. And the way that you end the game, similar to Knights of the Old Republic, uh, good or evil will obviously have an impact on your personal ending. The other thing I can say about story uh, is that there's six tribes in the world, each have a leader. Uh, obviously they're uh, fighting over who, who will take control and you as a player has an option to interact with them, uh, either help them out or take them out or unite them. And that will also obviously impact your personal ending. If you work with an evil uh, tribe leader, take, uh, take over, uh, help them take over the other ones, uh, start a war, obviously that will be an evil leader at the end of the game, and uh, maybe you are evil too, and maybe the world is going to die. So that will probably be your most evil end. So we're going to try to give the player as many options as possible for a personal ending. In terms of the last thing, the third thing in story, in the trailer you see this kind of wolf creature. So he's a predator, he's the only one left in the world. Everyone else, they are mammals, eat vegetables or fruit. Uh, and that sounds maybe a little bit strange, but it, al it also has a meaning towards the end of the game. So this character you will meet several times uh, over the course of the game. And at the end, he will be part of revealing uh, your, a little bit of your backstory. What are some of the challenges when creating an open world game in 2017? Well, content. I think making the open world is not difficult in terms of how large it is but actually to provide some kind of interesting variation in terms of content and experience, I think that's a challenge. So we're gonna try work hard with trying to create memorable moments and memorable characters rather than leading your linear story and putting cutscenes into that. So we're also gonna to try to make a little bit of smaller world, even though four by four kilometers is quite big, but we're using that in a very specific way for variation in traversal, etc. When does the game come out and what platforms will it be on? Next year, PS4, Xbox One and PC.